So welcome back to Family History. Um, we had a great um, uh, foundational uh, talk this morning from Marin Schooner, and uh, we had a very uh, lively uh, a breakout discussion yesterday in the, on what was uh, thought to be the sunny terrace room, but it wasn't quite that sunny. Um, we had a, a, a very uh, a diverse and a group of experts that um, both uh, may not all be listed here, and I apologize for any misspellings of anybody's names. Um, and we um, essentially, over the course of the afternoon, arrived at six different topics or potential project areas um, uh, for family history, um, validation of the information that's obtained from family uh, in, in the course of um, obtaining a family history, the implementation science to integrate family history into the clinical workflow, uh, to develop the user interface for both patients and providers for family history, to develop the outcomes research agenda that would um, uh, enhance uptake and adoption and provide uh, evidence for clinical utility. Uh, we discussed uh, briefly a holy grail of integration of all data and the development of disease risk models. Uh, um, and lastly, uh, to assemble a group to facilitate uh, the incorporation of family history initiatives into large uh, cohort studies. Um, so I'll, let me just go through these in, in a little bit more uh, detail. So. Um, in terms of validation of family history, probably some of the more age-old questions for family history is how do you know that it's accurate? And uh, particularly patient-centered, uh, patient-entered data, uh, has the accuracy of that uh, can be questioned. And there's also the question of how often uh, one should be obtaining family history as, as pedigrees, as families and, and our lives evolve, how does family history data also evolve with it and what's the frequency that it needs to be um, obtained. Uh, and we thought of a pro uh, that this could be the, the basis for some very focused initiatives in uh, small uh, projects in, 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 in practice environments uh, that, are, that are currently doing these or others uh, to develop um, sets of iterative questions uh, that could be used uh, follow in follow-up of an initial family history and to refine those questions to uh, obtain the most valuable information. Uh, and also, perhaps a corollary to that is uh, to develop adaptive patient questionnaires that would move them through some logic uh, to obtain accurate family uh, history information. Now, th some of these already may have been developed or, in develop or, or are in development, but I think we wanted to leverage from those and move forward. Um, this was also discussed in the context of um, David Valley's uh, um, uh, uh, program in Mendelian disease uh, uh, genetics, uh, where it's, uh, it's absolutely essential to obtain uh, adequate um, uh, validated family history information, and, and, the, and OMIM is being used as the entry point for a lot of the ascertainment for that project. And uh, so there's an opportunity to collaborate with that ongoing uh, research. Um, that uh, we, we talked briefly about how would we benchmark um, validity and, of course, obtaining information from living affected or other, affect, other family um, members would be um, uh, quite important. So to compare patient, single patient uh, um, oriented information with those obtained from the, from the family more broadly would be important. And a, and a, a side note was um, we, we recognize that um, there may be a myriad of uh, cultural and ethnic differences that might prohibit one from actually divulging uh, important family history information. Uh, the example that was used in our discussion yesterday was about psychiatric illnesses and how patients might be willing or not to, uh, to talk about that as well as you, I think you can imagine other disorders that, um, that, that we may not understand best how to elicit from a cultural uh, uh, framework. So um, the second topic was the best way to integrate family history into the clinical workflow, and at least one of the participants in our working group had done some analysis of their electronic medical records showing that only 1% had adequate family history data, and that was out of genetics clinics. So we discussed uh, the notion of having um, small studies that would uh, attempt to optimize the, uh, the way of collecting this data. Um, and. Uh, and evaluate, for, so for example, uh, a key question is um, patient entered versus a uh, ancillary health provider entered types of information. Can we do some comparative analysis between, let's say, uh, information that's obtained from a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant versus what is obtained from a patient? Um, and um, more uh, broadly speaking, just the setting in which the information is obtained in the context of a clinical visit. Uh, what can be ascertained versus what can be obtained perhaps outside of the clinical visit. 
Uh, so these would be, I think, relatively uh, simple initiatives to, to implement and understand better. Um, what best practices are. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about whether family history tools should be standalone versus ones that are fully integrated into electronic medical records. There are certainly pros and cons to each, and I think um, we have no idea really which is going to be best for facilitation of integration into the clinical workflow. Uh, there was a lot of animated discussion, I think, about the type using electronic media. I think Mark also mentioned social networking in our discussion yesterday. Um, about the possibility of developing a wiki-based type of model that would encourage family members all to contribute to developing a, a pedigree and a, fa and a family history. Um, there was also uh, lots of animated discussion about Facebook applications, and I think Jonas has done, overnight has done some additional work on finding out whether that could actually be um, easily implementable. Um, the notion of an iPad app and also the just comparing to the more standard genealogy web, web pages was were all elements of potential projects that could be undertaken in this arena. Uh, the information interface um, and education of providers, and I should say patients, I think the, the notion uh, that the group uh, uh, seemed to uh, be uh, interested in was not just to deliver information, uh, but also to uh, deliver an educational platform uh, as part of family history gathering. Um, Marin mentioned this this morning, but also um, what, what is it that we the, the primary care physicians want versus what specialists want. So I think the hypothesis was that generalists just want red flags, whereas specialists really want more detailed information about uh, uh, patient history as well as genetics and genomics. So could we just get that information as I think the VA has already begun to do and surveying providers in different settings and understanding what their needs are uh, to optimize their use of family history. And probably a much more challenging aspect would be to create the informatic informatics platform that translates in, uh, family history data uh, appropriate for the, for, the for the audience that's seeing the data. So if a PCP environment only wants to see certain things, can you, can you limit what the information content is for them versus for uh, other um, recipients of the same types of information? And we thought that, um, that we could build around the existing tools rather than uh, create something de novo, uh, that we should emphasize the fact that pedigrees should not go away. Uh, because they really can be informative and educational about the underlying genetics, um, that the tools should provide the most likely diagnosis, but also to suggest alternative diagnoses, that the information should be targeted, brief, and actionable. Um, in terms of the outcomes research uh, agenda, um, we discussed the desired outcome of uh, adherence to evidence-based guidelines, such as from the uh, USP uh, STF. Um, and we should be able to measure provider behavior in terms of their compliance with these guidelines and patient behavior in terms of their compliance with uh, physician or provider-based recommendations. Um, there was some discussion about could this be done in a focused way uh, in retrospective analyses, um, uh, knowing the caveats and the biases that might be associated with retrospective studies of looking at how, uh, what happens to patients subsequent to an adequate family history in the chart versus those that don't have adequate family history information in the chart in terms of certain outcomes and using the rich data uh, uh, electronic records from places like Marshfield, Geisinger, and uh, Intermountain Health. The idea of doing some prospective studies, a cluster randomization where some practices would pr practice usual care, others would practice family history informed care. Um, and uh, measuring, again, the, the patient provider outcomes. The notion of um, specifically um, collaborating with the VA um, and the, and, or the eMERGE network to integrate family history in some uh, areas but not in others uh, prospectively and look at compliance with guidelines, behaviors of patients in terms of compliance with uh, diet, exercise recommendations, medication compliance or achievement of uh, relevant preventive medicine goals around blood pressure control, uh, blood sugar control, cholesterol, and so on. Uh, so I think these are all um, uh, things, m many of which can be readily implemented. Uh, so the holy grail um, in some ways is, okay, family history is certainly one type of data, genomic data, molecular information. I think we need to be prepared for a time when all of this data will be resident in some type of data warehouse. And uh, the first thing is to think about initiatives to develop the methodology that assimilate these types of different complex data, all with their different um, uh, formats and, and standards, so that we can begin to approach 
um, what might be uh, the, the, the most um, refined molecular models that can be aggregated to predict uh, disease risk or drug response or whatever the uh, predictive model is aiming to do. Uh, we also believe that this requires access to um, uh, an incorporation of family history with ongoing popu population study initiatives, and we recommend that um, structured family history data be incorporated into as many NIH studies as possible, uh, particularly ones that are collecting genotyping or sequ sequencing data, and some of the places where that might happen are, are listed here. And then finally, uh, we felt that maybe some of the esteemed colleagues in the room or on our working group could actually form some kind of advisory group on family history that could um, look, look across the opportunities and make some recommendations where family history information should and could be implemented into ongoing uh, initiatives, um, also to um, probably provide advice to study PIs and, and steering groups about family history where they may not have that information and be able to inform them about the best ways to uh, collect it, um, and also potentially even to recommend future research in the form of uh, RFAs or, or the like. So I think that was it, and I hope I did justice to, uh, to our discussion. If any of my colleagues want to make any comments, please do so. Jeff, a point of clarification. The Mendelian uh, centers that I mentioned is not my uh, project. We have part of that pro project at Hopkins, but it's led up by uh, uh, Debbie at University of Washington and uh, investigators at Yale with Rick Lifton as a third site, and we being uh, Baylor Hopkins together. And, and just so, so I, I, I appreciate I think your clarification. And the press announcement is happening as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Well, congratulations, all of you. Um, and uh, I guess I was also curious as to whether the OMIM piece is is also across the entire. And I mean, this, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this, but the, but I think your point yesterday was also to uh, to integrate this with the OMIM uh, portion of that. It will be one of the collectors for interesting cases, and we'll go to the whole yeah. Whole right. So okay. the the group will have a repository that people can uh, uh, go to and interact with, and they'll end up being distributed to the centers based on capacity. So I think the point of our discussion was to potentially collaborate with you to obtain uh, accurate family history data on, on those uh, Mendelian families that you'll be looking at. So Jeff, yesterday when you, when you gave your talk, to me the, the exciting parts of that was that primary care folks learn to value family history. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really see that coming out of, of the, of the uh, breakout session slides, where, uh, you, to me, I think generating the data that shows value to your target audience is, is something that's really missing. And if you have to go in and show everybody why it's valuable, then it's never going to happen. Right. And so another element would be getting some of those talking points in, in, with real metrics uh, on, that, that could be shared across family medicine. Because I think right now people think it's a good idea, but they don't know it's a good idea. And I think some, somehow that needs to be conveyed. Or maybe it's not as good as we think, and we need to just stop pushing. Right, and I think, it's, I think your, your point is, is a good one. We didn't focus a great deal of our time on that point yesterday, but I think it was implicit that we really would like to develop both uh, as part of the implementation science initiatives means to evaluate um, what providers see and patients see is the value of having this information, and as well as also try to come up with some robust uh, outcome measures that could actually uh, be, or, or outcomes that could be measured in that regard so we can report it out in a way that's meaningful to, um, to health systems, to, the, to other providers, so they really, so it can be translated to other, other uh, environments where it's not being used. So thank you. I think the other thing that uh, I would uh, add this is, uh, I think, in your third project uh, uh, where you're looking at uh, prioritization and, and how uh, you can be actionable about family history. The thing that I didn't see there was uh, patient control and patient-centeredness in the sense that if you have a patient that completes a family history, uh, there may be risk for several things that are identified. So perhaps there's cardiovascular risk we look at and we say, gosh, we need to talk to this patient about their cardiovascular risk. Uh, but the patient may say, I'm really concerned about my family history of colorectal cancer, 
Uh, I think there's an opportunity to use this as a, as a pre-visit uh, negotiation tool about what are we going to talk about in the 10 minutes we have together. And the hypothesis I would have is if we prioritize based on what the patient is concerned about in their family history, that we may in fact see a, a better movement on health behaviors, which some of the health behaviors relating to diet and exercise at lower col colorectal risk also happen to impact cardiovascular risk. So I would really like to see a patient-centered yep. uh, research focus uh, with these tools. So um, great point, um, but not unique to family history. As, as you know, um, you know, when you see your provider and you have, your provider has a list of 10 problems and uh, you, know, you have your list of 10 problems and they go like this, you're probably not gonna have an effective interaction, so it, uh, whether it's family history driven or not, but I, I, your point is well taken, it should be included. Other questions or comments? Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Actually, if I can ask all of the breakout group presenters to make sure they leave their um, presentations on the computer up there. It'll help us going forward. All right, so um, next is Alan Howard and Mark. I'm not sure, it looks like Alan. Uh, pharmacogenetics, genomics. 